Hi, it's Tuesday, August 6th. We're continuing to talk about Tropical Storm Debbie, which is now centered near Savannah, Georgia, came up from northern Florida over the last 24 hours or so, continuing to be a huge flooding threat over this whole part of the southeastern U.S., some places already seeing 10 to 15 inches of rain, and more is continuing to fall with flash and river flooding, big concerns over a wide swath of the southeastern U.S., the storm is about to re-emerge over water and spend a day and a half to two days over the Atlantic before coming back towards the coastline of South Carolina and moving inland a second time. Now, yesterday we talked about how the structure of the storm when it re-emerges over water would be one of the key determining factors as to whether Debbie will re-strengthen and perhaps re-approach hurricane intensity before a second landfall. Well, we have a big answer to that question this morning. If you look at the satellite picture, you'll note right away that this is a very hollowed out storm. After about 24 hours, a little over 24 hours over the landmass, we have seen just a band of very wide radius convection remaining very far from the center of circulation, which is right here. The central pressure seems to have risen above 1,000 millibars, according to surface observations. And the little bit, degree or two, of shelf water cooling that has occurred has also helped to hollow out this center. This is now very broadened out, and this is the kind of structure that will take quite a long time to reorganize and develop an inner core again over water. So while it is about to spend a day and a half to two days over water, that is likely not enough time for this to become a hurricane again. We are going to see some reintensification. Right now it's a minimal tropical storm with max winds of about 40 miles per hour out in this band here. We will see those winds increase a little bit prior to a second landfall, probably, you know, maybe as high as 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. But this is unlikely to become a hurricane now, given the structure that we're seeing this morning. This is the radar picture showing the, uh, again, hollowed out center here near Savannah, Georgia. You can see where the rain is continuing to fall, and this is a slow moving system. That's why we've had so much rain. If we look at the Water Prediction Center map here, this is the total amount of precipitation and coloring here that's been observed where pink is over 10 inches, red is over 5 inches. You can see that whole swath up from the Florida Peninsula. And if I take that away again, all these orange, yellow, red, and pink squares show you where river flooding is occurring all up and down that region where rain has already fallen. And these red colors here indicate where current flash flood warnings are. And then the green is flood watches as rain continues to be expected in these areas. So four states affected so far, a wide swath of flooding risks. Everyone please be careful and stay safe today. Now talking about the track forecast for Debbie here, we are starting to narrow down on some clarity. We've been dealing with a lot of uncertainty with Debbie for the last few days given this slow meandering movement, notoriously difficult situation to forecast. We are seeing some convergence in the projections this morning, knowing the structure of the storm coming back out over water. That definitely helps. And you always get better data the closer you get to the event. So as we look at the European Ensemble Mean 500 millibar chart for tonight, Tuesday night, you can see where Debbie is centered, getting offshore now. We can see the ridge to the west, the ridge to the east, and uh, the overall motion brings this back out over water just a touch. And then the key feature here is that this ridge over the Western Atlantic is going to start nosing in further towards the Mid-Atlantic. So as we go out for a day and a half to two days, the storm is out over water, but then this ridge does nose in towards New Jersey and starts to push the storm back towards the coastline, and it moves inland over South Carolina again by sometime around Thursday morning. The timing there is going to still be a little bit fuzzy given this meandering motion, but the European has been very consistent on this track bending back northward into South Carolina. The GFS had been pretty disparate from this and had been yanking it all the way back into Georgia and going deeply inland towards the west as opposed to towards the north, but we have seen a convergence of these two models over the last 24 hours. The GFS ensemble spread here, red numbers indicating possible locations of Debbie on Thursday morning, has become a little more Euro-like. Yes, there are some members that still come back into Georgia, but most, most of them are now in southern or central South Carolina. And if we look at the European model, it's still further up the coast than the GFS, but generally now much closer together, showing this happening over the next couple of days. <clears throat> and it's likely that we will see the second landfall somewhere in South Carolina. That seems like a pretty good bet at this point.
Now again, as long as this is not becoming a hurricane, you know, the exact landfall location won't necessarily matter a tremendous amount in terms of wind effects and storm surge effects as the wind field is broad and this is not going to have a tight eye wall in all likelihood given the structure we're seeing here. And we're certainly going to see a lot of rain either way. You can see that whichever model you choose, be it the GFS or the European model, you get a ton of rain over this whole region of the southeastern US either way. So the exact track details here probably less important to you at this point. This is the National Hurricane Center official forecast showing that general idea coming back out over water and you can see these points are very close together. This continues to move slowly and 8 a.m. Thursday Eastern Time is the approximate landfall projection right now. Tropical storm warnings all along the coast here and you can see an eventual acceleration towards the north and northeast bringing it through North Carolina and then the mid-Atlantic as well where we will also see heavy rain impacts but first there will be some storm surge along the coast there is a few feet of water level rise and coastal inundation is expected again this is not expected to become a hurricane once more so there there's limits on this thankfully but there will still be some coastal flooding Inland rainfall, the big deal here, this map showing additional amounts to what has already fallen. Again, we've already seen 10 to 15 inches in spots through here. This is in addition to that spreading northward over time as the storm eventually makes its second landfall with an additional foot plus in these red areas showing up in parts of eastern South Carolina and southern North Carolina. And this is leading to very strong flooding risks. Again, high risk is a big deal when the Weather Prediction Center puts that out. So dangerous conditions here. Please know your vulnerability and your risk and stay safe and listen to local authorities today. And note that flooding risks will spread far to the north as the storm remnants eventually make their way up the coastline. There will be water falling across the mid-Atlantic and into New England, where even just a few inches of rain can cause flooding concerns. And so there is a moderate risk over portions of the big metro areas of New England and the mid-Atlantic within a few days. So keep an eye out for that heading into this weekend. That's about it for this video. Continuing to track Debbie, everyone stay safe. Again, mostly a flooding threat here as this continues to move slowly over the next few days. And uh, everyone be prepared and stay safe. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.